Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this edition of State of the Yankees. Today is a special Christmas, before Christmas uh, video about the Yankees going into the uh, Christmas holiday. Uh, this is on the uh, back end of the Machado tour, uh, going through Chicago, New York, and Philadelphia. And I've been reading a lot about rumors, about options, about decisions, and a lot of fans are on pins and needles to find out what Machado says. Well, the reality of the matter is that he said he's going to wait till till January to decide where he was going to sign. I've also heard rumors that allegedly he told friends, and I mean allegedly. A rumor is a rumor is a rumor. It doesn't mean anything until the facts come out. Having said that. As rumored, he allegedly told friends that he prefers the Yankees and if the dollars and years are comparable to other teams, he'll sign there. Well, I decided if, if that's going to be a possibility, and we've already got our two left-hand starters with Paxton and Hap, they're still looking for some uh, bullpen help because you have a b bunch of free agents. Uh, David Robertson's still on the um, free agency line. You also, we've lost Andrew Miller, who signed someplace else, and there's a bunch of other relievers that uh, would make our bullpen phenomenal that are still in discussions. Having said that, because the uh, hot stove is so heavy on where Machado is going to go, uh, they're also heavy on Harper, but the Yankees have already taken themselves out of the Harper arrangement. So with him not being an option or a pursuit of the Yankees, let's focus on Machado. And in today's video, we are going to compare our current third baseman, Miguel Andujar, versus Manny Machado. And as fan requested, we are also going to compare him to Boston's Rafael Devers. Now, interestingly enough, 2018 were both Miguel Andujar and Rafael Devers' rookie seasons. How do they stack up? Well, the numbers don't lie. So... Devers was 22 years old, a year younger than Andujar. Okay. Uh, Andujar is 23 years old, Devers is 22. Machado is 26 years old. So, where this comes into place is the fact that Machado has been in the majors for a while already, but he started as young as Devers at 22. Okay. So Machado's got seven years in, Machado and Devers are one year in. How do they stack up? Well, let's take a look, okay? Rookie of the year, and Duhar finished second to the Angels pitcher hitter, Optani, which, you know, considering how rare it is to pitch well and hit well in the major leagues, I can't really fault major league baseball writers for giving him the rookie of the year. However, him aside, and Duhar was a very, very close second and bar none, far and away, the best option after if you take him off the plate and Duhar was far, far and away the rookie of the year. So finishing second is definitely notable. It's also notable because neither Devers nor Machado ranked in their rookie of the year season. Machado being rookie of the, uh, being his rookie season 2012 didn't even rank. It was also the year that... Uh, Trout came into the, into the market. So uh, he wasn't even a blip on the radar when Tr Mike Trout came up with the Angels organization. However, he did over the la last seven years redeem himself by making four well all-star appearances in 13, 15, 16, 18. Rookie year and Duhar Endeavors didn't even qualify. And you really can't expect them to because, you know, they're the first year. How often do rookies make the first year? Maybe Hall of Fame caliber rookies like Derek Jeter make it their first year, but it's very rare you see a rookie making the All-Star team because that means you are the best in the league at your position and you're going up against the veterans and the best of the best in your first year. I mean, that's kind of a high bar. So I don't really um, give Devers or Duhar a knock on not making their first year. We will see, however, how they do because it took... And Duhar till his second season, his second season to make the All Star team. So all eyes on Devers and Duhar in 2019, their second year to see if they make the All Star team. Okay, there is where you want to no note how the real growth potential of the player. Okay, do it in the same in the second year. Now, Gold Gloves. 
Um, Machado in his second year and his fourth year, 2013 to 2015, won a gold glove. There is where it's going to be tricky. Now, Devers, uh, you know, he's a solid player, but he plays for Boston. I mean, come on now. Do you think I'm going to give him props? <laughs> Having said that, he obviously did well enough to man a position all year and help the Boston Red Sox win the World Series. That aside, and Duhar, okay, has been noted to be on the chopping block or the trade rumors largely because his defense is a little weak. And while Machado did not win the Gold Glove in his first year, he did win in his second year. I can't speak for his defensive numbers in 2013 uh, or 2012, his rookie year, um, because I didn't dig that far. Uh, I'm more interested in, in where these players are going to be next year and their growth from there. I mean, is Machado going to develop into a Hall of Fame caliber player? Is he going to help the next team he goes to get to the World Series? Those are the kind of questions that are far more pressing than how was his defense as a rookie? I mean... It would be great to have a gold glove as a rookie, but it's not expected. It is uh, just like the All-Star, setting the bar a little bit high. Only players like Derek Jeter or Phenoms, like Red Jackson and others, uh, who are all Hall of Fame caliber players make the gold glove their first year because you're going up against the best defensive players for your position in the entire league. It's just a little bit high of a bar, okay? Now... Having said that, let's go with the all-important batting average and on-base percentage, okay? Now, batting average, it, the, the ending this year, in his seventh year, Machado was 304. But because this is both Devers and Andujar's rookie season, let's see what Machado was like when he was a rookie at 22. It was a 297. Where did the others rank? Devers is down at 240. Machado is up at 297. He had a better rookie year for batting average than Machado did. Do I see potential for upside? Absolutely, no question. However, that comes down to you can't predict the future potential. Can the team develop a player, help him become the, realize his full potential and achieve those marks? On base percentage, the all important on base percentage. Can you get on base? Can you bring people in? Can you make it tough on the defense? Can you get on base? Okay. His first last year, Machado finished two notches at 328 below Machado at 330, whereas Devers is down there at the 298. Doesn't exactly make me shake when he's up to bat. Will he get hits? Yes. Can he be a nuisance? Yes. But when you're playing your arch rival, who isn't a nuisance? Even the worst player, you're like, don't give him any chances. You don't want to let that person uh, hurting you here. Okay. So now on salary side, okay. Last in 2018, Machado breaked in $16 million in his seventh season in the major leagues. In their rookie campaigns, Devers made 564000 Machado only 545000 Now, they're both restricted from the free market because this is their rookie year. Teams have controlled them for a little while, therefore they're able to give them league minimum. They're rookies. That also means they have tremendous upside on salary. If you can perform to a, a, a high level and really build up your resume and your credentials for when you do become hit free agency, then you can start demanding some top money. Now, where it comes down to for 2019 for the Yankees is, fundamentally, who do they see the, better, the biggest upside with? Do they want to go with an established player who's been in the league for seven years, commanded four all-star games, two cold gloves, and some solid batting average and on-base percentage, but it demands a humongous salary? Or do you want to go with you a rookie that is brand new to the league, granted hasn't established himself as much as Machado, who's only been here one year, but at the salary and the numbers, you're t if you were to trade away and do hard for, more, for other talent so you can go after a Machado and have him play third base, you're basically telling your organization that our player development is not confident in the ability to make turn potential into greatness. 
if you have to go in and get your Machado in there because your player development can't make Andujar in five years good as good as or better than Machado, that's what you're telling your team if you don't stay with, with Andujar. Having said that, the Yankees are definitely going to want to try to do everything they can to get to the World Series and Machado definitely has World Series experience having played for the Dodgers last year in the World Series. They did not play and do hard in the division series against Boston. Rumor has it, and I do specify and stipulate, rumor has it, they did not play him at third base because his defense was questionable. That comes back down to how much confidence you have in your player development to help a player fix that. Think about it. You have Gary Sanchez. They are keeping him because of all offensive numbers, but he leads the league in pass balls. Leads the league. You're telling me out of 31 teams, you you have the worst catcher in the league? Are you kidding me? Leads the league in pass balls. The man can't catch. Now, that is that an oversimplification and over dramatization? Yes, it is because. When you take uh, Sanchez in the playoffs last year, he actually did a very solid job. Did he have some pass balls? Yes, not nearly the frequency he had during the season, so he did do some work on that. And they do believe they can help him with his defense to shore that up and solidify that. But that's also telling us that their player development is going to be working with Sanchez, helping him to become a gold glove catcher down the road. So if you're making that kind of investment and have that kind of faith in Sanchez because of his numbers, why wouldn't you do the same thing for Andujar? He has tremendous upside. It's up to the Yankees organization to harness that and turn that into potential. Now at the same time, uh, I say this knowing full well that they dropped Nathan Evaldi like a bad habit because he had uh, health issues. Now, Tampa rehabbed him, then Boston picked him up, and he ended up helping them win the World Series. So, can Matt Manager make bad decisions? Yes, they definitely can. Can they make good decisions? Most definitely. You can't predict the future. You have to go with your gut and do what's best for the team. So, I want to know... In your opinion, who do you think we had better served as the Yankees third baseman in 2019, Machado or Andujar? Personally, as a homegrown player, my heart goes for the Andujars of the world. Players who come up like the Derek Jeter and have tremendous upside and can really produce and, and are questioned for their defense coming in, but know how to fix that and do fix it. He's also dirt cheap. He's got high caliber potential with second in the rookie of the year, and he's only 23 years old. Having said that, knowing the way the Yankees are trending, and they're definitely in pursuit of Machado, and especially with the rumors I've been hearing around, are they going to try and sign Machado and trade Andujar? Unfortunately, I think they very much are. So, for fan requests, I wanted to give you a position by position, starting with third base because of the Machado hot topic as to who is going to serve the Yankees the best in 2019. I want to hear your thoughts. What's your opinion? Should the Yankees keep Andujar, move him around, or should they go after Machado and do something about Andujar? Can they move him to another position? Sure. But he has no experience there. Do you want to try him someplace else? You've already got Gleyber Torres. You've already got... Uh, Vault and you have Stanton and you have Sanchez and the list goes on and on and on. You have a very deep lineup as it is, okay? So if you just happen to be browsing around the internet and come across this channel, please please give us me a like and subscribe and I'll be, ha be look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, have a great night. Merry Christmas. Go Yankees!